on Friedman, calling the Department of Homeland Security and even going to Friedman's house. Yeah, I think that's very alarming and very disturbing that a law enforcement officer can do a background check and in this case actually drove in to check my residence in person. Um, just because I'd filed a public records request with his agency. All things Dalton's attorney said were done to protect the jail. Well, like the sheriff said on the witness stand, if uh, you know he doesn't, if he's not personally familiar with the person requesting uh, or know that they're a resident, then <laughs> okay. he has the right. Is, I mean, he has. I, an I don't think the sheriff wants this guy for his lawyer. If you say that, <laughs> he's not the most articulate guy. The amazing thing about that is that not only did the sheriff just refuse to comply with the freedom of information request, but then he pushes back to intimidate this journalist. He gave him, as he mentioned in the video that you just heard, gave him a home visit. He ordered background checks for him. He even called the Department of Homeland Security to get federal agents to harass him. We saw this with Wolfgang Halbig when he started asking for freedom of information requests about the Sandy Hook shooting. This is a guy who was a security expert. He, he's had seminars. He's consulted with many different organizations about how to make schools more secure. He's been to Columbine. He's been to all these places where they had shootings. And yet, in Connecticut, in the last year, rules have changed. And so, in Connecticut, when he starts asking them for freedom of information, what they did was they passed his information on to some Florida law enforcement who show up at his house not once but twice to harass him, to ask him if he owns a gun, that type of thing. Now, one of the things that I thought was interesting in this story by Paul Joseph Watson is that the sheriff's attorney said that, uh, that this journalist's attempt to obtain the records in person invalidated the request. Really? If you're going to ignore my requests, we're going to show up in person. We've done that multiple times. We asked the airport here in Austin to give us some information about what the TSA, a TSA new uh, program with some new equipment. They totally ignored what we requested. We had the same thing happen with the Asymmetric Warfare Center. And you know what? When you ignore requests, repeated requests, we're going to show up. And if you think that's suspicious, if you get in our face about it, you're going to be the story. Because you're the one with something to hide. You're the one that doesn't want to let the people that you work for know what's going on. And that tells us that you're doing something that you don't want seen. We don't have to have national security for everything that every government employee in this country does. That's not necessary. But everybody is acting as if they worked for the CIA. Everything is a state secret. We can't know anything about anything. But they need to know everything about us. So let's go to this next article here. This is in Michigan. And this is an article also from Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars Today. A Michigan mother takes her 17-year-old daughter to the physicians for a minor foot in injury. And she's told that there's a new state law. And so this is what she says. She says, uh, the receptionist told me that it's a new law and there's no opting out of it. That uh, her daughter is going to have a private consultation with somebody there. At which point she said, I asked if I needed to leave and go to an urgent care center because I was not going to submit my daughter to such a conversation. She said, well, that didn't go over very well. So the receptionist closes a window and immediately the office manager comes out and confronts her and says, may I speak with you? She said, there's a new policy that would allow a child to access his or her medical records online and the child would be allowed to block a parent from viewing the website. Well, to sum it up, basically what this woman said is she told them that she's not going to allow anybody to talk to her child privately. But as Paul points out, this is a long history that our government is not only prying into our family lives, but it's also prying into our children's lives. It's trying to take over control of our children as well as our own personal lives. And, of course, at the bottom of this is something where they go in and they talk to her about birth control, about sexually transmitted diseases, where maybe they push uh, condoms on young men, whatever. The parents need to be a part of that conversation. We've seen in Massachusetts parents very angry about very explicit sexual education given to very young children in elementary schools. And there was a parent who pushed back against that. He said, I want to get my child out of that, or I need to be there. They said, you have no right to know what we're talking to your children about. We're going to talk to them about sex, and you have absolutely no right to know anything about that. He sued.
and he lost. And you know what the court said? They said, when you turn your child over to the government school, you have abandoned your parental rights. Our we'll founders be right back. pledged their lives, fortunes, and sacred honor to fight tyranny, and it's time to fight again. I'm Tisha Cassida, and I'm running as an independent for Congress in Colorado. I fight to end the military police state, ban GMO toxic foods, and abolish legal tender laws. Consider donating some of your hard-earned fiat currency to help me fight. Donate $25 or more, and you'll receive a gift to awaken others. I need and appreciate your support. Please donate at Cassida2014.com. That's C-A-S-I-D-A 2014.com. Paid for by the Committee to Elect Tisha Cassidy to Congress. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com To have a fighting chance against cold and flu bugs, get the world's best garlic extract, Allison Plus C. Fight viruses, bacteria, and fungi with Allison Plus C. Scientifically proven in double-blind studies using low doses to greatly reduce the number, severity, and duration of common colds. Allison Plus C contains 300 milligrams of stabilized Allison, the active ingredient in crushed garlic. Studies show Allison Plus C is effective against MRSA, bacterial, fungal, and viral infections. One tablet of Allison Plus C has the equivalent of 40 cloves of garlic. Allison Plus C supports your body's resistance to all types of conditions and can help lower high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So boost your body's resistance to infection with nature's best garlic extract. Allison Plus C. To order, call 855-ALLISON. That's 855-255-4246. Or go to allisonplus.com. Spelled A-L-L-I-C-I-N plus.com. Get Allison Plus C from Affinity Health Products. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Grew. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from 7 to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. The best free fuel stoves on the market for disasters and survival are Silverfire. Its clean cook stove technology allows you to pasteurize emergency drinking water, cook a meal, or sanitize your cookware with just twigs. A U.S. veteran-owned company, Silverfire's mission is emergency and recreation cooking products. Made of quality stainless steel, Silverfire's wide line of indoor and outdoor models range from solo backpack models to large family units. Cook cleanly and for free. Get yours today at silverfire.us. That's silverfire.us. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs Generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs Generator and Lung Delivery System at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. is we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everybody's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. That's right. Once it's everybody's responsibility, because the government is really the ones that they believe that they own your children. It used to be kind of obscure. It used to be just a few people were talking about that. But we just saw a commentator for CNN say, we need to get over this idea that you own your children. 
Uh, I'm sorry, MSNBC, that's right, MSNBC. And this is something that's been going on for quite a long time, even over the same issue as to who's going to talk to my child about sex. What are they going to tell them? When are they going to do it? At what age in their life? That's something that Michigan is now saying they're going to take charge of. You're not going to have any say so. You don't have a way to opt out of this. Now, when people had complained about their elementary school children being exposed to very explicit sexual information at a very young age in elementary school, they took it to court. The court said you have no rights. You have abandoned your child to the state once you bring them into the government school. That is a doctrine that has been called loco parentis in legal terms, in place of the parents. They see themselves as acting in place of the parents. But it actually is even broader than that. As we talked about the one-year anniversary of Ed Snowden, as we see what the government is, is grabbing on everybody, whether or not they suspect you of a crime, you know, we're all now considered to be guilty. And they're going to comb through our lives to see if we are violating any of their thousands and thousands of regulations, anything that they can pull up on us. And of course, if you become a pain for the government, if you are a dissenter, if you criticize some of their policy, you will be investigated. You will be intimidated. That's what we see in the case in Tennessee where we see a journalist trying to get information about prisoners that he believes are being ill-treated, only fed twice a day and other things. He was just trying to get some information with the Freedom of Request Act, Freedom of Information Request, and uh, he was investigated by the sheriff, intimidated by the sheriff with home visits, background checks, even putting him, uh, turning his name over to Homeland Security to be investigated. But when it comes to medical stuff, what we need to understand, one of the reasons that we oppose Obamacare is not just because it's extremely expensive and inefficient because it's a welfare program. It was written by the, uh, by the insurance companies, and it's a welfare program for the insurance companies. That's really who it's a welfare program for. That's one reason to oppose it. The other reason to oppose it is because the government is going to use that as another point to investigate your life, to control your life. When we look at the justifications that we see from uh, big statists in areas like New York where, they, where Bloomberg banned soda pop, they're always talking about how you are a cost to society. Now, if everything is being provided by the government, if they're providing all the health care, what do you think they're going to say about your cost to society? What do you think they're going to demand to control in your life if they say that they're providing all of your health care. But there's another aspect to that, of course, and that is they're going to use it to pry into your life to see if you do something like uh, that they don't approve of, like own a gun. We also see that the American Medical Association is alerting doctors to probe for that sort of information. And it goes even one step farther. On a story today on InfoWars, John Rappaport points out that a website, uh, MedAI, that's uh, medicalartificialintelligence.com, Med AI says, why is predictive modeling essential to healthcare? Say so it's not just helpful, it's essential to government-run healthcare. They say the algorithms of predictive modeling can analyze hundreds of data points to make a diagnosis or a prediction of risk. Well, that's fine if they're just looking at healthcare, right? Is it going to stop there? Or are they going to be doing a diagnosis to see if you are a threat to a political party, if you're a political threat, if you're a risk for the state? If they see that in any of these factors, then they're going to start coming after you in a more detailed way. That's what happens in an authoritarian state. We saw that in Tiananmen Square, as we had the 25th anniversary of the government crackdown there, as people were talking about that, the, they said people don't even know what happened if they weren't alive at that time. The younger generation, when presented with pictures of the tank man, think that it's a piece of art or that it's a... Uh, a parade that they're looking at. They have no idea what happened because the government has been able to flush that down the memory hole in the terms of 1984. That kind of Orwellian state where the government controls all information, where the government shuts down all political dissent, all political activity, where they comb your life for every detail, where they take your children away and sexualize them in a kind of brave new world approach 
That's what we're concerned about. That's what we're going to be talking about. Alex Jones is going to be talking to us. He's going to be calling in. He's going to take this in a little bit more depth. And we're going to be joined in the... In we're on the march.